and here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, I've been to Europe three times, and I've got to tell you, the first trip I didn't know too much. So people ask me where to go, how much it's going to cost, how to pack, things like that. Um, so listen, it depends on three things. What season you're going where you're going in Europe, and also uh, what matters is um, how long you're going to be gone. So here's what I have to say about that. I like to go in winter because there is no one at the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> There's hardly... Okay, people still travel then, but winter is so great because even though you're cold, you don't have to wait to get into anything. It's really cool. Okay, so um, you can go in the spring, but I wouldn't go any later than May. I've never been there in summer and I probably won't ever do it. And then the next thing is how long are you going to be there? Um, if you want to splash out a few times and uh, take some luxury things like wine tasting in Tuscany or staying in a fancier hotel, then you're going to stay less time. A lot of people only have two and three weeks, but I'm, I like to have two or three months, if not more. So you have to budget. Um, and then, uh, let's see, season, how long are you going to stay? What country? Okay, Italy is my favorite country in the whole world. And I have to tell you, there are cheaper countries. <laughs> Things are a little less expensive in Sicily. Um, I've heard Croatia has good prices, Budapest, the Eastern European countries. So here's how you have to kind of look at it. You can pretty easily get a deal airfare. I like to go one way and not do a round trip because I don't know when I'm going to end my adventure and I like to have it open so there's plenty of deals now to Europe so check it out and then the next big thing is your accommodation so when I first started um, well I stayed in a pension the very first time I went uh, I have been there three times and that was okay it was like $35 a night euros like 40 I guess the exchange rate wasn't too good um, I recommend using your credit card more than you think because that's usually a better exchange rate and just getting cash out of your ATM. So um, I brought a lot of cash last time and it turned out you can't change it so easily. So it's just better to get it out of the ATM. So for my own way that I travel in Europe is I like to get apartments. And so in winter, you can get apartments for like $50 a day. If you look on Airbnb, um, booking.com what's the other one vrbo so um and then the other good thing about the winter is that you don't have to know where you're gonna go like i got an apartment in rome like a week before i got there in january and i'm staying in the same apartment this year for two weeks so the other way to approach it is to just do it on the lamb. So I found a lot of rooms in Sicily and Italy for around 45 to 50 dollars a night. And that's what a hostel costs in California. So there you go. Um, and I don't do hostels anymore. I can't stand having an iPhone blaring into my eyes in the middle of the night, the light on, people not giving a shit. I mean, it, people are pretty inconsiderate. Usually in hostels, they've never traveled before. They don't know that they should not be talking in the middle of the night with lights going on and off. I mean, it's it just depends on the people in the dorm. Uh, so that's why I don't do it anymore. But, you know, to each his own. If you're a heavy sleeper, you can save some money that way. But still, I found that uh, people, European hostels, there's a lot of them, but I'm past that now. Okay, so I just save it more money. And then the next one is uh, I like to cook when I'm in Italy. And it costs a lot less to buy food and wine in Europe than it does here in California for the same quality. And um, 
This is what my therapist told me. She's from Venice. She said that the alcohol content is much higher here as opposed to Italy. So that's why when I had a glass of wine at lunch, I never got drunk. So you can save a lot by cooking. And that's why it's good to have an apartment because you can cook and shop and meet people in the grocery. Um, and then, you know, I'd probably go out like once a day. So I'd figure out where the places were that the local people were going. So I didn't end up going to the super fancy places because you can find mom and pop places that are just as good, if not better. Um, and then another tip is to eat out at lunch rather than dinner because that's going to be lower cost. So the last thing I'm going to say is um, how to meet people. So it's a myth that you're not going to meet anybody unless you stay in a hostel. No. I go to meetups. I do business. I talk to people. I don't care if they don't want to talk back, but in Italy, everybody wants to talk back pretty much. And if they don't, I don't take it personally because they it's their right to not want to talk to me. But one of the benefits of traveling by yourself is that you can make friends at your own pace. You're more outgoing because you're not having this insular experience with somebody else that you already know you're really in the culture and you're you're immersed in it so if you have any other questions comment below let me know um if you have any tips that you can add this will be my fourth time to europe coming up in january i'm very excited so I also uh, do consultations on travel, and I'd love to talk with you. Um, but if you have a question, post it here, and I'm happy to discuss it online when I when I uh, I'll try to get to it as fast as I can. I have to put my paying clients first. So have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.